Hi, this is William Bronchick, and today I'd like to discuss with you where to incorporate your real estate business. A lot of people have confusion about where to incorporate their corporation or LLC or limited partnership when they do real estate investing. Now, some people have heard that Delaware is a popular place to incorporate. It is. As well as Nevada. There's lots of advertisements on radio and in magazines about incorporating in tax-free Nevada. Here's the challenge with incorporating in Delaware or Nevada. The reason that Delaware and Nevada are very popular for two reasons. Number one, they have very favorable laws about liability of corporate directors. What does that mean? That means if you sit on the board of a corporation that is formed in Delaware or formed in Nevada and the shareholders are unhappy and they want to sue the corporate they want the corporation to sue you, what's called a share shareholder derivative action against you as a director for some sort of malfeasance, your liability is limited under the laws of that state. And when there is that type of suit, no matter where the corporation resides, the state in which the corporation was formed will decide the laws about liability for corporate directors. Now, your head is probably spinning, what the heck does this have to do with me? Very little, in fact. If you're not dealing with a public corporation, if it's your private corporation with you and your family and your spouse, and there's just a limited number of people, that type of liability is not a big issue for you, is it? Of course not. What's the other reason? Well, in a place like Nevada, there's no state corporate income tax, and that's great if you operate in the state of Nevada. However, if you form a corporation in Nevada and then bring that corporation, let's say, into the state of California, that corporation is known to the state of California as a foreign corporation. A corporation formed in California is called a domestic corporation. So what you now have to do, since that corporation is doing business in another state, it must register with the Secretary of State of that state. So now you're paying fees to the Secretary of State annually to the state of Nevada and to the state of California, and any income you earn in California will be taxed because you'll have to file a corporate income tax return with the state of California, even though you won't have to for, you won't have to file one with the state of Nevada because there is no state corporate income tax. So as you can see, there's really no huge advantage here if you're operating a real estate business, let's say in California, to, to incorporate something in Nevada. Likewise, if you're operating something, let's say in Texas, and you want to form a corporation or LLC, then you should form a corporation or LLC in that state. That's what is known as a domestic entity or domestic corporation or domestic LLC. Now, what if you do business in multiple states? Let's say you live in a place like Kansas City where you're straddling two states. Well, you may have to have two different entities, one for each state in which you do business, or you can form a corporation or entity in one state and register it to do business in another state. The bottom line is, is that don't automatically assume that a Nevada or Delaware corporation or LLC, or for that matter, any type of entity that is being pushed upon you as the one-size-fits-all works for you. It doesn't. Everybody has different situations. Everybody has different business practices. And make sure that you review these issues with a competent legal and tax professional before proceeding. This is Bill Bronchick, and I hope you enjoyed this session. Hi, this is William Bronchick again. And in our discussion of corporations, I'd like to introduce you to my Wealth Protection Library, where you can form your own corporations or LLCs in doing your own business planning. I believe in teaching people how to do it themselves for a very good reason. People come to me as an attorney all the time and say, could you form my corporation or form my LLC? We'll usually charge them a fee of anywhere but five to six hundred dollars to do that. Now, the only challenge with that is, is that afterwards there are certain responsibilities that you as the owner of that corporation or LLC have in maintaining and running that corporation or LLC. It involves annual minutes of meetings of a corporate shareholders and directors, or filing forms with the Secretary of State. It's not difficult stuff, but the problem is most people don't know what to do, and therefore when they pay an attorney to do it, they assume that once the paperwork is done, it's all done. Not true. You have annual filing requirements, paperwork requirements, and keeping up with what's required under state law. Otherwise, if that corporation gets sued or it gets audited, you will lose your corporate protection. So instead of people paying me to do it for them, I usually recommend that they enroll in one of my programs or invest in one of my home study programs to do it themselves. The reason being is, number one, it's cheaper if you can do multiple corporate entities. Once you learn how to do one, doing two or three is no big a deal because all the forms are in there and you can just fill them out. 
But more importantly, the manuals talk about what you're supposed to do after you form it. The annual requirements of each state that are in the manuals, the filing forms, the minutes of meetings. It's not complicated stuff, but the more you learn about your own business, the more you will take responsibility for it, and the better your corporate record books will be. And ultimately, that means you will have protection if you get sued or audited. Go to my website at LegalWiz.com and check out my Wealth Protection Library. I look forward to being a partner in your success.